A lot of powerful men and women have made a difference in our world. A select few have been game changers. Being recognized by your peers as a true legend is reserved only for the greatest in history. Has earned that distinction. Art knew early in life that he wanted to be somebody. It became his true calling. You know, the difference in winning and losing is this much. You know, it's, it's almost too scared to talk about. You know, and this much is what I call a special kind of mental toughness, a special kind of attitude, a special kind of desire to be somebody. Art's career began by fulfilling his lifelong dream of coaching high school football. His fiery competitive edge inspired his players to win, and as a result, he was honored twice as the Georgia Coach of the Year. Art would use the leadership skills he mastered on the football field to motivate a new generation of people who also wanted to make a difference in other people's lives. These coaching principles are the best kind of business principles too, you know, treating people good, you know, looking for the good things in people, praising people, you know. Art's father died prematurely and left the family with nothing more than a small cash value life insurance policy and a meager $10,000 in savings. The family was devastated, both emotionally and financially. While still coaching football, he started selling term life insurance part-time, and it wasn't long before he was making more money from insurance than coaching. Art saved every penny from his new part-time career, amassing more than $42,000 in his first 18 months. It was time to make the toughest decision of his life, to leave his beloved coaching position and go into business full-time. At that time, I knew, I mean, we had a perfect formula, a perfect system, you know, to, to carry by term and invest the difference all over the United States, you know, and I knew that if some company, I didn't know if we were the company, but I knew if some company did it, they were gonna wipe this industry out. Art was an immediate success in his new venture because he was selling a product that he believed in, one that he felt every consumer needed, but he knew there was a better way to build a company. In 1977, 85 people, sparked by a dream and inspired by Art's vision, threw caution to the winds and took the biggest risk of their lives. Their courage gave birth to a business revolution and ignited an explosion that would shatter the stale traditions of a tired and bloated industry. The company pioneers had no real money, no corporate power, no clout, nothing but a dream and a crusade. Their success would become an affirmation of the free enterprise system and proof that doing what's right still prevails. Art's company would defy all odds, not only surviving the vicious and personal attacks from the giants of the financial services industry, but actually defeating them all one by one in individual life insurance sold. In 1984, A.L. Williams became the number one company in the industry, winning the first of seven consecutive national championships. People ask me, why? How, how could A.L. Williams do the impossible? We literally did the impossible. Yes, it was because of the system, the part-time concept, but it was more than anything, our people, the love we had for each other and the commitment we had for each other. You know, in my gut, I had a feeling that we were gonna make it, but my business judgment kept telling me, there's no way, you know? So I think it was probably three years, but I know at least two years, the first two years of A.O. Williams, every speech I made, every recruiting interview I did, I would always tell them the odds are about like this of us surviving. I'm talking about just surviving. I'm not talking about dominating the industry and changing the industry. Us, We sold life insurance to correct an injustice. It was a movement that was unbelievable, I'll tell you that. A.L. Williams later changed its name to Primerica, but Art's core beliefs and sound financial principles still resonate throughout the company. Today, Primerica is the largest independent financial services marketing organization in North America and is publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Art Williams is one of the greatest success stories in business history, and not surprisingly, one of the wealthiest men in North America. After three decades, he continues to inspire leaders from all walks of life, making a profound impact on both their personal and professional lives. My greatest paycheck is just being part of something like that, to go fight to fight, to fight impossible odds. Nobody gave us a chance of making it. 
but we did it, you know? And the way we did it, I'm so proud of it. Dr. Jerry Falwell, Chancellor of Liberty University, introduces Art Williams. Fifteen years ago, he was a high school football coach. His wife, Angela, was teaching English in high school. He got an idea, just an idea. And ten years ago, he turned that idea into a company, a concept, a practical concept. Ten years have passed. 150,000 people work for him now. Last year, he sold $77 billion worth of insurance. This year, $100 billion. That is more than Prudential and New York Life, number one and two, combined in 10 years. He's from Monroe, Georgia. He has the dialect to prove it. And uh, to speak to you about how to win in business, there's a lot of obvious things I could talk about. You first have to find a need. You've got to feel the need for a consumer out there. You've got to have a market. You've got to have somebody to sell uh, your product or your service to. You've got to, if you really want to get big and win big, you've got to have a uniqueness. There's got to be something a little bit different from you than all the competition out there. But by far the most important thing you've got to have to win in business in these United States today is a very unique kind of mental toughness. Out of the track, they rule you the privileged class in America. If you're born poor from an average, ordinary background like I came from, they, they, they say you're supposed to give up all your big dreams and all your big ambitions and all your big hope. If you have, have a high IQ, they rule you brilliant. If you have an average IQ like me, they say you ought to drive a truck or be a janitor. Well, bull. Hey, that, that, that ain't the way. That ain't the way it is, and that ain't the way it ever was. They ain't nobody ever designed a test, nor will they design a test that can measure the heart of a man or a woman. The things that, the things that are unique to winning in business in America today are not outside artificial things like IQs, college board scores, college degrees, and stuff like that. The key to winning in these United States is what's inside a person. It's your integrity, it's your people abilities, it's your character. I believe in developing this winning edge. I've got 10 or 12 points that I won't be able to go over with you tonight, but let me just give you a flavor of what I think you've got to do to succeed in these United States. Number one, you've got to get excited. Folks, I don't believe anybody will ever tell you anything more important than this in winning in these United States. Ninety plus percent of winning in anything you try to do in America today, you've got to be excited. People in America won't follow or believe in a negative, dull, disillusioned, frustrated, dadgum crybaby. People want people that are positive and excited and enthusiastic and tough. The greatest, listen, the greatest definition I ever heard. I thought about this 10 million times when I wanted to quit along the way of a winner. This guy said almost everybody in America can stay excited for two or three months. A few people can stay excited for two or three years. But a winner will stay excited for 30 years or ever how long it takes to win. Another key to building this winning edge and this mental toughness is you've got to become a dreamer again. You know, I'm a Methodist and we just changed ministers a few weeks ago and our new minister came in and, and the uh, church was just packed. And the first thing he said, he says, well, it looks like everybody came out to see the monkey perform. And the second, the second thing out of his mouth, he said, for a church to be a great church, you've got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, you're dead. And boy, I sat up and I said, man, me and this guy going to get along good because he knows what he's talking about. See, folks, I believe in order to win, you've got to feel good about yourself. And folks, it didn't take long. You couldn't create a word game to, to get one of my, my kids to say I can't. Bring it home a little bit more personal. When April and Little Ark were, were just this little and could understand words, every time they said I can't, I made them do three push-ups. Folks, there ain't nothing you can't do in America if you want to bad enough. Another key in building this winning edge is, folks, you've got to stand for something. People in America, the good people in America, are fed up with here with these dadgum fence sitters and mealy mouths. Uh, corporate America has an especially black eye uh, in business today. Most people in America think you can't find a company. They think you can't find a salesperson that'll tell you like it is and stand behind the word. They think these companies will sell anything, say anything, just to make a sale, just to make a profit. It is, yes, you're going to be controversial. 
Folks, if you want to win in these United States today, just get ready. You're going to be controversial. The only way not to be controversial is to be average and ordinary. They just call me anything but, but average and ordinary. Now, I know some of you might say, well, well, you know, I don't think I like Art Williams. You, you know, he sounds like an old tough butt to me. Well, folks, I'm telling you, you can be good and tough at the same time. I, I bet nobody's ever talked to a religious broadcaster like that. Key, another key to developing this winning, this winning attitude that will give you a chance to do something great in American business is, folks, you've got to make a total commitment to what you're about. Do you know almost the American people have lost their toughness? They've lost their ability to make a commitment. See, folks, in trying to win in business, you're just going to have so many false starts. You think you get it going time after time, and you just get knocked back to ground zero. And it's your ability to compete, to pick yourself up off the mat one more time, to go for it one more time, that's going to determine success or failure. You know, we've got a divorce rate in America some 50% right now. You, you know, it just seems like that people that go in business today, they have an attitude, well, I'm going I'm to stick my toe in it. If I start making all this money, get all these promotions, then I'll, st I'll see this thing through. Well, folks, that's not the way it works. The first step to winning in business in America today is you've got to make a total commitment. Total commitment gives you that little extra ounce of courage. You need to fight back through the tough times. Winning in business demands the same kind of commitment that winning in marriage demands. You know, I fell in love with my wife in the second grade. Only girlfriend I ever had. We ran off and got married our freshman year. Had both of our children before we, we left college. We're true business partners in marriage. We go everywhere together. I spend more time with her. Been married to her 26 years. Now I got two grandbabies. Love her more today than I ever have. But I don't like her all the time. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of times every day that I don't like her. You, you, you know, uh, I... I'm a nut about brushing my teeth. You know, if I can get to a toothbrush, I'll brush my teeth uh, three or four, five, six times um, a day. And, and Angela's always forgetting everything, you know. And she always leaves the cap off the toothpaste, you know. And when I go in there to brush my teeth, the cap's off. It's got that hard little crust around the edge. You know, it just burns me more than I can tell you, you know. And, and, I, and I, get on, uh, I get on Angela's nerves about a lot of things. You know, we were having uh, dinner last week. And every time we get through, Angela kicks me under the table, you know, and gets me back in my room and says, Arn, you, you ain't got no class. You, you know, I wish, uh, I wish, uh, I wish, Arch, you could learn to eat with your mouth closed, you know. <laughs> but see, folks, if you want to win in business, everything's not going to work out like you want it to, but you've got to be committed. I want to have great kids. I want to have a wonderful relationship. I want to have tremendous uh, grandbabies. Another key in building this winning edge in business is you've got to learn to treat people good. Another thing that, that these universities pollute America corporations with is this attitude you better not get to know your employees you better not become friends or, or, or get to get to know the spouse or the children of your employees because you might have to fire them you might have to reassign them and if you're close friends you can't really you can't manage people in a tough-minded way the only way to manage people and get the most out of people is treat them good learn to love them and care about them yes it hurts from time to time but it's the only way you know, everybody you work with in business, you've got to look at them and pretend there's a, there's a flashing sign on their chest. And everybody's asking you, make me feel special. Make me feel important. Say something good to me. I want to be somebody. 